Alright, so this one is just the same as the previous video regarding absolute extrema. Uh, so we're going to do it relatively following loosely the steps that I laid out in the previous video. So for example, first find your derivative and set it equal to 0. So you get 4x cubed minus and then you get 16x and you set it equal to zero. Uh, we could factor. Or let me let me write it aloud first, and then we'll factor. You can see that you can factor a four x out of that, and you get x squared minus four. That you can factor further as x plus two times x minus two and that gives you the following critical numbers. Uh, so our critical numbers are x equals 0 when this term is 0. When this term is 0 you get x equals negative 2 and when this term is 0 you get x equals to 2. Now you'll say why did you not find where the function the derivative of the function is not defined well this is a polynomial so it's always defined so I don't have to look for that and in general you do you want to find out when the derivative is 0 and when the derivative is not defined so now what I do is I evaluate f at the endpoints so negative 3 f at negative 2 f at 0, f at 2, and f at 3. In this particular case, notice how all the critical numbers actually leave inside of this interval between negative 3 and 3. By the way, this is where the negative 3 and the positive 3 came from. Uh, however, it could be the case that this uh, critical numbers could be outside of the interval. In, if that is the case, you just don't evaluate them in this list, and you don't consider them at all. So that uh, that would be the only thing you have to be careful to make sure that your critical numbers actually leave in the interval. And if they don't, you just ignore them. Don't I mean, you list them out, but then you don't evaluate the function there, and don't consider them when you're looking which one is the min and which one is the max. So we evaluate this function. Let me do that real quick and uh, I will write the results. Alright, so I went ahead and calculated this uh, number just by plugging them into the uh, function. For example, at x equals 0, which is the easiest, at x equals 0 you would have uh, f of 0 would be 0 minus 0 plus 3 equals to 3. So you get them like that. And then you look for here, this would be an absolute max at x equals negative 3. Let me separate this. Um, there's an absolute mix, min at x equals negative 2. Another absolute min, this shows that there could be more than one at x equals 2, and another absolute max at x equals uh, positive 3. So this is just because this function is actually very symmetric. If you see the graph of the function right here, you have an absolute uh, min, I'm going to write mark a relative max here, but it's an absolute min here, another absolute min here, an absolute max here, and an absolute max here. This guy right here is not an absolute extrema, this guy is just a relative extrema. Extremum, sorry. So this just shows you how not all relative extrema are absolute extrema and vice versa. So this being just a, a relative max but not an absolute max 
and the endpoints here being absolute max but not relative max. If you continue this graph, I mean this graph would just continue up here, that there's no there's no relative extrema at that point. However, it is an absolute max. So absolute and relative, the only time it corresponds is when the critical points happen to be inside of the interval and also assume in this case the minimum the absolute minimum so that's that, that's all we have to do here and uh, I'm gonna have a few more examples where we do uh, problems applied to business for the next uh, next video alright thank you for watching, that's that